The first thing I felt driving into the farm, as we drove through, it was an overcast day, that white glare, full sky of clouds. Um, and as I drove through the gate with my friend, sitting in the passenger seat like a little kid out the window, wind blowing through my hair and stuff like that, and I just felt this overwhelming presence of my father and I just felt almost like this hand on my shoulder. And then believe it or not, the sun just pierced itself through the clouds and this like ray of light shone into the bucky and it like warmed me up completely and it was so overwhelming. And I essentially heard my dad's voice in my ears, but it felt like I'd come home. It felt like that restlessness in my soul. You know, it felt like that had calmed down. My name is Tashni Manju. I am a 33-year-old female farmer um, out here in KZN in Albert Falls. Um, I've only been into farming for the last year, but it feels like I've done it my whole life. It feels like the most fulfilling, soulful thing I've ever done. So in a nutshell, that's what defines me these days is that I'm a farmer. So I'll never forget the first time I actually saw a seed turn into, go from seed to germination and poke itself through the soil. It was a hot day, so the ground was a bit cakey, a bit hard. And I just saw this, you saw like a little mountain, like a little lump. And then the next day, there was this little seedling that popped through this, this lump of rock hard sand. And I never forget looking at it and first of all feeling fulfilled because I'd planted, I'd ha I was part of the team that planted this particular crop. It was the first crop we'd ever planted since Shakti took over the farm. And I just stood there and looked at this plant and I, like a million things went through my head. I felt like no matter how overwhelmed I could get in life and no matter how much anxiety that comes with whatever it is that you're going through, you know, you can have this kind of resilience and strength break through this rock hard ground and bring this new life into this world. Like I planted the seed and now it's alive. You know, it, it was so overwhelming. It was like a little baby. And ever since then, people laugh at me. I call them babies. My dad, who's unfortunately late now, was the most loving, kind, a patient man who taught me everything that is, he had to teach, right? His nickname was MacGyver essentially because there was nothing he couldn't do and nothing he couldn't figure out. Um, I was quite a rough and tumble, roll in the mud little kid as well. So I loved being outside. I loved, I learned how to fish before I could read or write. Um, any typical tomboy activity, you, that's where you'd find me. So. I had an amazing childhood outdoors that way, but then of course you grow up and I studied media and communications. And then I moved to Johannesburg and worked in the digital marketing industry for 10 years. And basically a lot of that was corporate and I started to feel like I was selling my soul a little bit. I started to feel like I was restless. Of course, as all plans go, next thing this looming, daunting coronavirus became real a reality for us here in South Africa. Um, and our president very quickly locked us down. And I decided that I needed to come home to Peter Maritzburg. Um, I've got family here. My grandparents who are 91 and 96 right now, my aunt and uncle and my mom, to do the shopping and be the person on the ground that goes out into the world and, you know, looks after everybody essentially. And then I think it was about day 40 or 400,000 where you couldn't even run on the road. You could, the only place I'd gone to was checkers and completely in and out in seconds as well. Um, then one of my dearest and oldest friends, Shakti, phoned me and said he was coming to Peter Maritzburg to Albert Falls to his dad's farm. Would I like to come and visit? 
um, and of course I jumped at that. So like a little baby kid running around the fields as I got here, it was just too exciting to be out in nature with the sky and the sun and you know we'd been inside for a long time at that point also. Um, and Shakti was very patient and very happy to teach and I was of course very happy to learn. So everything that he could teach me, he had the patience to teach me. Um, and I guess because we are the best of friends, we had a good energy going together and we had, I started to help him out with a couple things and it turned into volunteering more than visiting. Um, and then very quickly, he put his trust and his belief in me and gave me an actual role on the farm. And now he's in Johannesburg running another company with his sister most of the month. And he entrusts this entire farm to me, you know, to, to manage and to look after and to help thrive. And it's the biggest responsibility and the most beautiful responsibility I've ever had in my life. I was lucky to have a team and a boss who believed in me and trusted me and empowered me and taught me. So be grateful for your influences and the people you surround yourself with. But let me tell you something, there is nothing you can't do. Farming has taught me more patience. It's taught me about being resilient. It's literally problem solving from start to end. No matter how much you prep for your day, something comes out of nowhere and hits you for a six and you've got to think on your feet and on the go. And there are people depending on you. You've got to be able to make a decision quickly. So trust in yourself and trust in your ability to do that. And if you know in your heart and in your gut that it's something you want to do, go out there and shake the world because little girls can do huge things too. And nobody can stop you but yourself. Farming is exactly what I'm saying to you. Have the love for it. If you don't have the love for it, don't farm. It's like cooking good food. You know, food's got a taste. It doesn't have to be uh, a seven course meal. You can make a good sandwich and it tastes very good. It's love.